There are misconceptions out there when it comes to lung cancer and not knowing the facts can be dangerous, even deadly. KCTV 5's Belinda Post spoke with a doctor from St. Luke's Precision Oncology Program to get critical information regarding diagnosis and treatment. Dr. Subramanian, lung cancer kills more men and women worldwide than any other type of cancer, and we all may have the misconception that you only get lung cancer if you've been a smoker. But there are other people who may even be higher at risk. Tobacco smoking is still the major cause for lung cancer, but a good number of patients um, can be uh, diagnosed with lung cancer and have never smoked a cigarette in their lifetime. Um, in uh, United States, uh, there's approximately 20 to 30,000 patients a year. And uh, the causes in that uh, group of patients we believe to be uh, radon exposure uh, in some cases. Uh, in other situations, um, secondhand smoking or environmental tobacco smoking is felt to be a risk factor. Uh, there are also some uh, other risk factors uh, such as industrial pollutants, radiation exposure, as well as in some Asian countries, even smoke from um, cooking. Can you please tell us why it's so important to get early detection? You know, lung cancer is the most common cause of cancer-related death. And one of the major reasons for that is more than half our patients that we diagnosed lung cancer already have stage four disease. That is, they have mm -hmm. widespread disease at the time of their diagnosis. And by definition, that is an incurable disease. It's treatable and we can contain the disease, we can extend life, we can improve their quality of life, but we cannot cure the cancer in those patients. So it is important that we change that by catching this cancer at a much earlier stage. And that is where screening programs are very important. So who should get a lung cancer screening and when do you do it? So there are some clear guidelines out there on who should be getting um, uh, lung cancer screening. Now, lung cancer screening involves uh, getting a CAT scan or a CT scan uh, once a year. And uh, current recommendations are for patients who have smoked or continue to smoke and are age between 55 to 75. In addition, there are also criteria on how much they should have smoked. And the current guideline says that it should be 30 pack years. And the way we calculate pack years is the number of years they've been smoking multiplied by the, num the number of packs of cigarettes they smoke per day. So if somebody has smoked a pack of cigarettes daily for the last 30 years, then it's 30 pack year smoking history. Whereas if they smoke two packs a day and have been smoking for the last 15 years, it is the same 30 pack year smoking history. So both of those patients would be potentially eligible for lung cancer screening if they are between the ages 55 and 75. Do you have any recommendations tied to chewing tobacco or perhaps vaping? In terms of chewing tobacco, it's a clear risk factor for cancer. Uh, more commonly, what, uh, the oral cancers as well as throat cancers are more common with chewing tobacco. Lung cancer is also a risk. Many of our patients that chew tobacco uh, are also um, tobacco smokers as well. So they kind of go hand in hand. In terms of vaping, um, its health effects are uh, clearly being studied, but it is not something that we recommend for patients who want to quit smoking. There are adverse health effects to it uh, from, um, in terms of the lung health, in, the, in terms of uh, other lung diseases. Um, so we don't recommend vaping as a measure to quit smoking. For more info on St. Luke's Precision Oncology Program and to set up a screening, go to stlukeskc.org.